Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm doing a remake of my modern Aleppo bars and I did this a while ago. It's <laughs> this is a tricky soap because it needs to cure for a full six to nine months at least if you let it go longer even better um, so it takes a while to be able to do a lather test and everything well i did i have a previous video and i will leave a link down below or if i can get a card to go you know what i'm technology challenged and i'm <laughs> if i can learn how to do cards on my youtube videos i'll get you a link otherwise it'll be down below i know how to do that so after these bars, my original batch, which I did in May of 2020, after they cured, I did a lather test, and I'll show you that in this video. Um, and I love these. I only have a couple bars left, and I need to remake them, and they take six to nine months to cure. Ah, I gotta be better about being on top of stuff. But anyway, let me tell you about one of the, couple of the special things about Aleppo soap. First of all, traditional Aleppo soap, it's a traditional Syrian soap. It has a long history and there's a couple of YouTube videos that show um, like the traditional way of making it. It is, it's fascinating. They, I mean, they make huge batches and they flood the floor of this studio with the batter and they cut it in blocks and it's very cool. So traditional Aleppo soap is made with very simple ingredients, just three ingredients. Well, if you can count water, <laughs> four ingredients, uh, laurel berry fruit oil, olive oil, and sodium hydroxide and water. That's the fourth ingredient if you want to include that. But um, that is it for a traditional Aleppo soap. Well, I have done a modern twist on that because uh, similar to pure Castile soaps, which is just olive oil and sodium hydroxide, they are wonderful, wonderful soaps, but they don't have a big bubbly lather and traditional things that, you know, I like in a soap. It's a, it's a denser, um, my children, <laughs> this is not a pretty name. They said the lather's kind of snotty. Uh, it gets a little slippery, very gentle on your skin. It's great soap, but it doesn't have the big fluffy bubbly lather that I like and I know a lot of people do like. So what I did was I put my modern twist on a traditional Aleppo soap. And to do that, I have added a little coconut oil and a little castor oil into the recipe. I will leave the full recipe in the description box below. And also I have added traditional Aleppo is unscented. Laurel berry fruit oil does have a very pungent sort of um, earthy scent all to itself. I think it's wonderful. It's kind of like rich dirt. I don't know how to describe it, but anyway, traditional Aleppo is unscented. I will be putting cedar wood essential oil in this soap so it will be all natural but um i just feel like it amps it up and if i'm gonna you know mess with a good thing and twist it around and make it modern i felt like i had the liberty to do that and for my liquid portion in this modern twist on aleppo soap i'm going to use aloe vera juice just because i thought it sounded wonderful to go with this sort of earthy cedar wood scent and the laurel berry fruit oil has this wonderful sort of pungent and the aloe juice and it just all sounded very sort of botanical and earthy to me. So aloe juice is going to be the liquid portion also. I'm Onward, let me tell you about laurel berry fruit oil. It is not easy to find. Um, I get mine from Bee Scented about once or twice a year. They have a sale and it goes, uh, first of all, they have the best prices even when it's not on sale um, that I've found. It's hard to find. They have the best prices that I've found. So I would recommend Bee Scented for your laurel berry oil. And uh, when they have a sale, I grab it because um, it's great. And this soap is wonderful. When I finally got to do my lather test, I was just tickled. It is fabulous. So I'll bring you along. I'll show you a clip of that. We're going to make some modern version of Aleppo soap. And I encourage you to go watch the um, YouTube videos of the traditional Aleppo because it's really cool. Uh, if you're a soaper and you love soap history, get in on that action. It's it's awesome. So anyway, I'm going to get everything pulled together, get my hair pulled back, <laughs> and let's make some modern Aleppo soap that's going to have to cure for a long time. <laughs> All right, let's make soap. All right, so I'm getting everything prepped for my Aleppo soap, and I just wanted to show you the laurel berry fruit oil gets very firm in these bottles. So I'm going to give these just a quick pulse in the microwave to soften the oil up so it's pourable. So that's just a tip on getting it out of the bottle. 
All right, I've got all of my oils here, except I'm adding my laurel berry fruit oil now, which I did just pulse that in the microwave for, you know, about 20 seconds to make it pourable. Um, and it comes out much easier when it's warm. So what I've got going on in this bucket, and again, it's all written down below here, but I'll just tell you I have 68 ounces of olive oil in here. I have 19 ounces of coconut oil, six ounces of castor, and 31.5 ounces of laurel berry oil. Okay. And these say they're 16 ounce bottles, and you know, they are technically, but you lose a little in translation. That's why it's 31 and a half ounces of laurel fruit instead of 32. Um, that half ounce is not a huge deal if you can squeeze those last little drops out and get it up to 32 ounces that's okay but i tend to get 31.5 ounces of the laurel berry fruit which is what i get out of these because there's a little bit left in there but anyway boy this smells amazing i kind of love this earthy fragrance gotta be honest all right so it's this nice dark color because of the laurel fruit um, when it saponifies, it turns a creamy beige color, which is wonderful. I am going to hold off. I've got my cedarwood essential oil off to the side here. Um, for this size batch, I'm doing three ounces of cedarwood essential oil. So not a lot. I'm going to go very light. I just want it to sort of be an um, understated lift. I don't want it to be pungent with the oil. But anyway, I'm going to hold it off until after I get my lye mixed in and uh, so that it won't speed up on me and I'll have a little more control over the trace and we're not doing any swirls or anything, so it's pretty basic. So let me go get my cooled off aloe vera lye solution and we'll get moving forward with this. All right, here is my aloe vera lye solution, which I did dissolve a t uh, two tablespoons of cane sugar before I added the lye and it has tussa silk fibers and sodium lactate. So what's going on in here is I have 16.8 ounces of lye crystals and 30 ounces of aloe vera and distilled water. And I did a 15-15 split, so 15 ounces of water, 15 ounces of aloe vera juice, uh, and that's what's going on in here. So let's get it in here and get to blending, and then we'll add a, the essential oil after we get a get an emulsification then I'll add the fragrance not fragrance essential oil you know what I'm saying cedarwood essential oil and you'll see it start to beige up as it emulsifies it's going to turn colors here a little bit it's kind of a fun chemical reaction to watch and it turns after it's done curing it's just a gorgeous sort of creamy beige color when it's all said and done there we go I'm gonna go ahead and get this in it goes kind of fast the laurel fruit oil traces pretty quick so just pulsing with my stick blender and then stirring with it go. And that's looking pretty good. Let me just make sure I got all the corners and we'll get my molds over here. And these are my Essential Depot molds, just a standard. They're not at all skinny. Um, and they're just a wonderful, sturdy, standard mold. I have used them time and again, and I think they're wonderful.
right, it's the next day. It's been 24 hours and look at this gorgeous, just creamy color. I love these. Um, so let's get them out of the mold and cut them. There's no swirls or anything fancy going on in the middle, but sometimes, you know, just plain, beautiful, luxurious soap just says it all. You don't need all the bells and whistles sometimes. And I need to remind myself of that. Sometimes there's just beauty and simplicity. Well, I think that this soap kind of encompasses all of that. So it's nice and hard. Look at that gorgeous sort of just creamy color with olive tone to it. Love it. All right, let me finish getting these out of the mold and we'll get to cutting. Let's cut into these. Uh, again, there's not a lot going on. It's just solid goodness all the way through. I love that color. It's just beautiful. So I am going to do a front and a back stamp on these. I'll show you that obviously when we get there. And at the end of all the cutting, I have the lather test to show you from the first time I made this, which was exactly like I didn't do anything different this time. So that lather test will be accurate for this soap. And let me tell you that lather test, it lathers like a dream. It is a really, really nice bubbly lather. It has all the goodness of the heavy olive and laurel fruit oil, um, plus the bubbles from the coconut and castor. So I'm tickled with the lather on these. So it's been a couple of hours since I cut these and I just let them sit when they're cut and just let the surface areas sort of air dry for a couple hours. So um, what I'm gonna do now is come in and bevel all of them and do my stamping. And I will do my logo stamp on one side and on the other side. I really liked how the last ones I did came out and I'm gonna repeat that. I have this little um, stamp and it, well, sorry about the lighting, there we go. It says handmade, uh, what does it say, natural soap. So this little stamp will go on one side um, and I'm gonna do it exactly the same as I do my logo stamp. So we'll do the logo first. I take my isopropyl alcohol and I spritz my stamp with it and that just helps it release. For me, this is what works. All right, so the alcohol helps it release. I just place it where I want it and give it a little tap see how it feels and another tap because these are nice and hard these bars rock it out and the wetness on there from the alcohol will just evaporate right off so that is my logo stamp on that side now I'm going to flip it over and I will do the same thing I just put a little sharpie on here to mark where the top of this was so I would know which direction to put it so I'm going to spritz this with alcohol and set it on my soap somewhere sort of in the middle and just tap it a little here and let's see there we go so I will do both sides like that on all the rest of these after I get them beveled
Okay, so it's time for the lather test. It has been several months. Actually, this soap was made in May of 2020. Let's uh, give this a lather test. This is my first time. I have never made this soap before and I've never lathered this soap. So you're with me on my very first try. Oh my word, it's very bubbly and creamy. And laurel berry oil is so good for your skin. If you have skin issues, eczema, psoriasis, um, this is a wonderful soap. It's, it's gentle, it's wonderful, oh my goodness. It's got a very thick, buildable lather, it's creamy. I'm loving this. It has a very high laurel berry and olive oil um, content. It can get slimy in between uses if you don't put this on a drying soap dish. If you allow this to dry out fully between uses, it's rock hard and it will last a good while. This is wonderful. I am tickled with the lather. I mean, you're not picking up all that here. I wish you could feel it. It's just bubbly and thick, and this is wonderful. Um, the lather just is so easy to build. So very happy with this recipe. I hope you give it a try. Please uh, let me know if you give this recipe a try and how you like it. The cedar wood is a very gentle essential oil, um, but it's a nice scent, very unisex. Um, this would make a great shaving soap also because of the slip to it. It's just wonderful.